questions about? <laughs> Brigham's Briar comes from the factories where the pipes are made. Most of it's Italy and Greece. Uh, there's actually a shortage of briar right now because the uh, the briar mills are having a hard time finding people that are willing to go out into the briar forest, do the cut, do the harvesting, and then finding a briar cutter takes them about two years to really train the cutter correctly how to look at the burl and get the maximum quality pieces out of it. So, These shortages are caused because of? There is a boom in young pipe smokers now, and there is a growth in the market of, of people coming into pipes. There's a lot of young guys that are picking up the pipe because they've seen Harry Potter movies, they've seen the Lord of the Rings movies. They're coming out, they need to come out to pipe clubs, they need to come out to pipe shows and get their hands on pipes, but these guys are starting to come out. Um, I know a group in central Michigan called the Order of Collegiate Pipe Smokers and it's all 20-somethings and it's wonderful. Uh, women are coming out and smoking pipes and joining pipe clubs and, and doing that. So It's also a little bit of a conversion over from the uh, hookah bars that got trendy but then in a lot of states got shut down because you can't smoke indoors anywhere. So what do you do? Instead of buying a whole hookah, you go out and you buy yourself a fancy church warden pipe that you saw the hobbits smoking in Lord of the Rings, and you find an aromatic pipe and you get together twice a week with your friends and you sit around and smoke your pipes. So that's what the, that's what the college kids are doing now, and it's great. I love seeing them come out and hang out, uh, but that's causing a shortage, plus this is an industry where uh, pipe production for 40 years continuously went down and the factories only learned how to try to make the most of a shrinking business. Now they have to learn how to expand the business. And they really, it's really a, a, a mindset that they've really got to change. Uh, problem is, the block of wood that was used for this pipe we got these pipes in, we received them about three months ago. So it was probably 39 months ago that this was in the ground. So it literally takes about three years to get the wood out of the ground, get it, get the block cured, cut, processed, moved over to the pipe factory. The factory that makes these for us holds on to each block in the grades for a year so that they know that they've had an extra drying period before they make them. Then we order them and they take six months to complete an order and it takes five, six weeks for it to come across the ocean. So there you go. It takes about three years from the time the block comes out of the ground till the pipe can be in your mouth. If you see an increase, you got to increase that process all the way down at the beginning and you got to work your way up. You can't, you can't cut corners. Uh, well, you can, but you shouldn't. Was that that was probably more than you wanted to know about that question? It's interesting. Brian, tell everybody the different finishes and how they develop it. That one finish and what's different. On the on the Brigham pipes, I don't have all the finishes here, but the idea is that the 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 Voyager is. Obviously a block of wood that had a flaw in it. it. had a really big flaw in it. So instead of throwing away the block of wood, just rusticate it, stain it, and we've saved that piece of wood. When you move up in quality, in fact, this is a good example. Really what you get in a difference in quality is you get a block that was able to take the stain a little bit better. So the lighter the color, the easier the wood is to take the stain. In general, you're going to feel that the lighter stain pipes are going to be a little lighter weight. By being lighter weight, that means that the block is less dense, it's easier for it to absorb the heat. So in fact, if you want to pass these two around and feel the difference, just in the weight of the wood, or the weight of the finished pipe, you'll notice the slight difference between the $75 retail and the $90 retail. And the three, three dots is up. The, 
the three dot is the higher of the two. Yeah. And then for us, we take a big jump once we go out of the three dot and into the signature series. You'll see we go to we switch to a little B, which works out good for me because then they all look like they're my pipes. Um, now we switched factories completely, and they're made in France for us. The big difference is that each shape is slightly hand finished, so it comes off the shaping machine, and then the pipe makers there see that that needs to be smoothed out, or this needs to be evened out, and then the stems are hand cut acrylic versus the vulcanite. So the acrylic stems are a lot easier to keep clean; they're more expensive to make. Uh, they're shaped individually to each pipe. They are less comfortable on the teeth. So if you're a clencher, most unless you unless you're really used to the the feel of acrylic in your mouth, it's a little harder on the teeth. Um, from the Chinooks, which are all sandblasted, because there was a flaw in the pipe, like this big crevice right there. From the Chinooks, we move up into, again, different variations on quality of the wood and the ability for it to take a stain and the, and the amount of graining. Um, a good example is our presidents, which I kind of skipped over a little bit. There's three different grades right next to each other. We do it a little differently because the one on the bottom is the lower price in the 150 range here. This is 160. These are this is 200. The difference is, is that with this contrast stain, we're able to cover up any variances in the grain. When you get into the sandblasting, it takes more time because then you have to pull it. You have to. You've tried to make a smooth. Now you got to pull it. Find the spot that was the problem. See if it can be fixed. If it can't be fixed, like that big crevice right there, then you throw it into the sandblasting cabinet and you sandblast it so it's extra labor. The difference will be again the density of the wood and the weight by volume of the wood. So there's more labor here. When you get up into the top of the line, it's a flawless block of wood. This is plateau briar, which is more expensive because it's the outside of the briar block. So with it being on the edges, it takes up more surface. It's also able to get more straight grain. So that's why you're you're paying for when you get into the higher higher end ones, part of what you're paying for is all the mistakes in the lower ones, trying to get to that. Um, I didn't mention the Sportsman, which was a once a year release that Brigham used to do for the Toronto Sportsman's show. And it's a part sandblast, part smooth, limited pipes done once a year. It was a traditional thing that they would bring out at the Sportsman's show in the spring. A little more durable pipe, but all the facets of a high-end pipe meant for people to go out fishing with or go out hunting with. Uh, and these have got a couple of little tricks to them that we don't do with the, uh, with the other pipes. It's got a little beveled channel in there so it's easier to fill. But again, every one of them's got, there's the system tucked in there. Uh, how was that, Larry? Very good. Thank you. Covered that? Yep. Okay. Um, I think one of the things I want to mention is that the reason why there's so many different kinds of pipes is because there are no bad pipes. Whatever pipe you really enjoy is the best pipe and finding the pipes that you enjoy, that's the, that's the fun part for me is, you know, when we started out smoking a pipe, we tried many pipes, we've tried to figure out what we liked and where we were. and. Some of our favorites were the first ones, and some of the ones that we dreaded were the first ones, and it's kind of that, that exploratory journey. Uh, earlier today, somebody asked me how our pipe tobaccos are, and I said, they're all great. Now, whether you're going to like it or not, that's a whole different thing. 
but it's all about getting out there and trying it and finding out what works for you and figuring out what your favorite style of pipe is. Uh, I was also asked if I have any large pipes, if I smoke large pipes or small pipes. This is my own that I was smoking. Depends on the situation. I have large pipes and I have small pipes. Do I need a small pipe for when I'm out traveling because it's more convenient to carry around? Yeah. Am I going to carry a big pipe like this in my bag? No, probably not. But when I'm sitting down to watch a uh, to watch a race or watch a football game, that's when I want a big pipe because yeah, you know, it's like four feet away from my chair to my pipe rack, and I don't want to have to get up and walk that four feet. <laughs> um, but. I guess I, the main thing I want everybody to know is that every pipe that you own and every pipe that you enjoy is a wonderful pipe. Whatever tobacco you enjoy is absolutely the best tobacco out there. Whatever tobaccos you don't enjoy aren't the best tobaccos out there. Any questions? Any answers? <laughs> On our, uh, on our Brigham USA website, there's our very rudimentary catalog that you can look at. Uh, if you want to learn more about me and the couple other things I do, find me on Facebook and you'll be able to see some of the other stuff that I do and that's kind of hobby related and sometimes fun. Uh, and. You'll also see some of the stuff we're doing around the house sometimes, too. So, But I promise I will not post pictures of anybody's food. Yep. You, you were taking a nap then. <laughs> well, we'll do the raffle now. While we're on that subject. Drum roll. Get out your tickets. I'll be Vanna White. I can't pick the ticket and model at the same time. <laughs> and the lucky winner is last three numbers is nine eight two. Guess what? Me. 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 <laughs> How'd you do that? Here, why'd you give me that back? <laughs> anyway, you want to redo it? You want me to redo it? It's up to you. Yeah. We'll, we'll redo it. How's that? No. Well, now that yours isn't in there, you can pick your own. <laughs> anyway. Brian, thank you very much for coming. <laughs> Thank you for leaving.